And we continue to follow the breaking news of the day. The NYPD officer implicated in the death of Eric Garner has been fired. We've seen the reactions from some of Garner's family and local officials all day. And now Garner's mother is holding a press conference right now to address the news. Let's listen. No justice. No justice. No justice. No justice. No justice. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Justice. What do we demand? Justice. What do we demand? Justice. What do we demand? Justice. What do we expect? Justice. What do we expect? Justice. What do we expect? Justice. What do we pay for? Justice. What do we pay for? Justice. What do we pay for? Justice. My name is Reverend. My name is Reverend Kirsten John Foy, and I'm the president and founder of the Ark of Justice. We are joined by a host of leaders and activists who have been standing besides Gwen Carr and the Garner families from day one. We are joined, of course, by the matriarch and the leader of our movement, the very example of dignity and a leader exemplar in her own right, the mother of Eric Garner, Gwen Carr. <laughs> We are joined together in unity with our co-laborers from CPR, from Justice League and Justice Committee, from the Malcolm X grassroots, from a host of organizations and elected officials, starting with our very own New York City public advocate who has been on the front lines with the Garner family from day one, Jamani D. Williams. And the city councilwoman who represents the area of Staten Island where Eric was killed or murdered by Officer Pantaleo. She has been a stalwart and a steward of justice. And she is here today as she's been from day one, Ms. Debbie Rose. Yeah. Woo. 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 The chairman and the current steward of criminal justice oversight and law enforcement accountability in our city, who despite the fact that He's from an entirely different borough from where Eric was killed, has not failed nor shrunk from the responsibility and the obligation to stand up for all New Yorkers, Mr. Donovan Richards. There's a host, and I'm not going to go, I, I'm not, I cannot mention everyone. So if I don't mention you, forgive me. We're here today in no small measure to the unfortunate fact that five years ago, the mayor and the then police commissioner failed to exercise appropriate leadership and fired Daniel Pantaleo. Yeah. Five years later, Thousands of tears, millions of feet marching. We finally have a glimpse finally. of what justice should look like. Yeah. Yeah. But it's only a glimpse. glimpse. We're not here today for a victory lap. Mm. Yeah. We're not here today to sing a celebratory song. We're not here today to pat a system on the back that done only what was expected of it. Yeah. That's right. And late. And did so 
five years too late. It is not lost upon us that the district attorney of Richmond County failed to do his job yeah. and indict Daniel Pantaleo for the murder of Eric Garner. It is not lost upon us that the Justice Department, under both the Obama administration, yeah, yeah. Let's be True. clear and honest That's right. That's right. That's right. about what we're talking about yes, here. Sir. Take them to church. Both the Obama administration yes, sir. as well as the Trump administration yes, sir. denied this family, this city, and this nation justice yes, right. mm. for the murder of Eric Garner. Yes, yes. Political games have been played from day one. Political games to cover up the full extent of what we all witnessed that day. Eric Garner having the life choked out of him by Daniel Pantaleo and having the justice choked out of him by all of the officers that stood by and did nothing. That's right. That's right. They want us to be happy that after five years, a man that the world witnessed choked the life yeah. out of Eric Garner finally lost his job. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How low are our standards today That's right. mm. that we should be expected to celebrate the firing of a man that violated office and departmental policy, right. applied a fatal chokehold to an innocent unarmed man, yeah. and was allowed to continue to enrich himself That's right. to become more of a wealthy killer cop? after the death of Eric Garner, who is now allowed to draw down the money that he's put into his pension over the last five years. We're not here to celebrate. We're here to correct the record and turn the next page for you all. There is still a district attorney in Staten Island. There is still the opportunity to revisit the grand jury. There's still an opportunity to release the grand jury minutes uh -huh. so that we can all know which cops lied. That's right. To hide the truth. Yeah. yeah. Because there are some liars who are still currently hiding the truth. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And protecting their fellow officers. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not here today to celebrate. We are here today to put the system on continued notice. Yeah. We are going back to Staten Island. That's right. That's right. We are going back to the district attorney That's right. to demand that the grand jury be reconvened, yeah. that there be a new investigation, not just into his murder, but into the grand jury proceedings themselves. That's right. That's right. We're going right. back right. to the mayor. That's right. Yes. Your job is not yet done, sir. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We need to put into law and codify a ban on the chokehold today. The city council and the mayor have the authority to do that today. That's right. As has been stated by Reverend Sharpton and others, we're going back to the state. We need to make sure that police officers cannot hide behind a badge That's right. while performing criminal acts that result in the death of innocent, unarmed black men. We want all the police officers that were on the scene that day fired. All of them gone. All of them. Daniel Pantaleo still has due process. He's still appealing. But while you are allowing him to continue through his due process, we've got to make sure that the city doesn't fail to acknowledge that Gwen and the family still have their process That's to go right. through. That's right. That's right. A process of grieving and mourning yes. that can only be addressed and closed and be given closure 
in full accountability right. for all responsible. That's right. We're going to hear from a lot of people, so I won't take up much more time. But I will say this, in all of the years that we have stood with Gwen, where they have lied about who her son was yeah. mm -hmm. and what he was doing on that day yeah. as a predicate for his murder, yeah. she has not shrunk. Yeah. She has not withered. That's right. She has not buckled. Yeah. She has not bent. She has not bowed. That's right. Even in the midst of the death of her granddaughter Erica. Amen. Who died of a broken heart because of the denial of justice. That's right. Even in the midst of Harry having to just bury her own husband. Mercy. Mercy. Mm. Mercy, who stood by her side on the front line yeah. fighting for justice for his son Eric yeah. who died of a heart attack another broken heart yeah. so you want us to be happy with a man being fired when his action caused the lives of three innocent people we have not to coin a phrase lost our minds but we have gained a new sense of purpose. All of the officers, all of those who are responsible must be held to account, Commissioner O'Neill. And I close with this. There are some that will criticize James O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah. There are some that will say he has been part of the problem. Yeah. I will say this. He is the only man that has demonstrated any right. amount of courage That's right. That's right. That's right. and produced any amount of leadership. Yep. So there's a lot to criticize in his statement. There's a lot to point to, to say, sir, you are out of order. But I choose to reserve that judgment for a different day. Today, James O'Neill exercised the courage that the mayor, that Attorney General Loretta Lynch. That's right. Fuck their name. That Attorney General Barr. Yeah. And the DA. That the District Attorney of Richmond County and the Southern District of New York failed to exercise. That's right. Yeah. Let's hear now from our co-laborer before we hear from Gwen, who has a also been on the front lines mm -hmm. fighting and keeping this movement alive and progressing. Our freedom fighter, Lloyd Cologne. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Of Community Woo! United for Police Reform Woo! and the Justice Committee. Stay up here with me. Today, as soon as Police Commissioner O'Neill announced that he was firing Daniel Pantaleo, what we saw was Mayor de Blasio give mediocre comments, similar to his mediocre run as mayor Talk of about the it. city. Do not be fooled. Do not get got by this mayor and the police commissioner's announcement today. The reality in this case is that IAB, the NYPD's Internal Affairs Bureau, mm -hmm. recommended that Pantaleo be charged years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was Mayor de Blasio and Police Commissioner O'Neill who decided not to move forward with charges against O'Neill. Pet, sorry, pet, uh, charges against Pantaleo. That is what they decided. <laughs> O'Neill should be charged too. No. <laughs> this was decided. NYPD only charged Kizzy Adonis. Sergeant Kizzy That's Adonis right. that we've heard absolutely nothing from. That's right. The Gardner family has heard nothing about the charges that have been pending for Kizzy Adonis for years now. It was the CCRB that brought us to this day. That's right. Woo! Woo 
That's right. And more importantly, That's right. it was the mother of Eric Garner. Right. Yes. It was Mrs. Gwen Carr with the support of New Yorkers yes. that got Pantaleo fired today. Yes. It was by no means Mayor de Blasio and it was not Police Commissioner O'Neill. This is the power of the people and the power of the Garner family never giving up for five years. Five years. De Blasio also in his comments this morning said this is over. He said this is closure, that this is done with. That is that is wishful, delusional thinking on behalf of the mayor. This is far from over. We have NYPD officer Mark Ramos yes. and NYPD officer Craig Ferlani. Craig Ferlani and Mark Ramos, look at their faces, both of them testified. They testified that they heard Eric Garner say he could not breathe and they did nothing. Mm. nothing. Charges need to be brought against them. This right. is a chargeable offense. Yes. Don't get it twisted. It is a chargeable offense. That's right. What we also have is, everybody knows, Lieutenant Christopher Bannon. Woo. The officer who texted. Wow. I love it. What did he text? Everybody knows. He yeah. said, not, not a, a big, big deal. deal. Yeah. When told that Eric Garner may be dead on arrival. Yeah. His lack of care for a New Yorker, for a black man dying in our streets is a chargeable offense. Right. He needs to be off the police force. Yeah. Kizzy Adonis, Kizzy Adonis, the only officer with charges pending by the NYPD. Sergeant Kizzy Adonis was the commanding officer on the scene. Right. Commanding officer who failed to supervise. Her current charges pending are for failure to supervise. Yet five years later, here she is, still on the police force. Wow. The Gardner family not hearing anything, not one word about Kizzy Adonis, not knowing if they're going to be forced to sit through another trial. Another trial is unacceptable to have the Gardner family sitting That's through. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. Unacceptable. And if there's not a trial, then under de Blasio's NYPD secrecy law 50A, this can get pleaded out. And the Garner family can never know what happened with Kizzy Adonis. Mm. That is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Yeah. And then we come to Justin D'Amico. Wow. Office, NYPD officer Justin D'Amico. Got him. Got him. We got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Justin D'Amico has no charges pending. He was Pantaleo's partner that day. Mm. Justin D'Amico, look at his face. It's important that we put all these cops' faces out here because they got no business in our streets. That's right. In Maldonado's report that was leaked this week, we also heard that Justin D'Amico, in official reports, said that there was no excessive force used. No force, said there was no force used. Then the video came out and showed that Eric Garner was strangled to death in a chokehold. Not only did he lie in official reports, he's also the one who charged Eric Garner with a yeah, felony yeah. after he was dead. A felony that would have required Eric Garner to have sold 10,000 cigarettes. Yeah. 10,000 cigarettes. We can't have officers who lie on official reports right. and officers right. who falsely charge people, especially dead New Yorkers, with felonies. Every single one of these officers need to be fired. That's right. And here it is, and you've heard it from them themselves in their own testimonies, in their own reports. These are all fireable offenses. We don't need these cops on our force. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. Our next speaker needs no introduction. This is the mother of Eric Garner, yeah. our leader and warrior in this movement, Mrs. Gwen Carr. Woo. 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 
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I thank you all for coming out with the support that you have been giving me for five years. It's been five long years that I have fought this fight. I have not fought it alone because many of you have been out here with me. Many of you have been here from day one. Yeah. Like Minister Kirsten John Foy said, he was with me from the beginning. That's right. Reverend Sharpton with me from the yes. beginning. Yes. Yes. The Justice Committee, yes. CPR, That's and right. many of you who's out here yes. from the beginning, who helped me fight this fight, who helped me get to this point. I could not have done it without you. That's right. Thank you, Mr. We love you. We fought and fought to get the NYPD to give us a file number so the CCRB would bring charges against right. Pantaleo. Right. Right. We fought that for, fight for a couple of years, and then what they do to try to appease us, they give it on, to us on the anniversary, on the fourth anniversary, the eve of the fourth anniversary of my son's death. That was supposed to appease us. Well, let me tell you, it didn't. It just made me more angrier. And it just put more fight into me. All right. You know, I had a lot of stumbling blocks that has come up to me, but I'm not stopping this fight. That's right. There's many of my family members who has been taken away from me mm -hmm. since I started this fight. Right. Many of them you don't even know, but you do know my granddaughter Erica. All right. She died the day before New Year's Eve. Nice. On in uh, 2018, mm. it was just, I mean, I'm sorry, it was 2017. Mm. Then just a few weeks ago, I lost my husband, who stood here, and he stood in this very spot with me. He was over here in Police Plaza with me while we went through that long, drawn out, oh, that trial, that trial. We had to wait because Pantaleo's lawyer wanted to go on vacation or take two weeks to bring in his expert witness, an expert who never even examined my son's body, who never even seen the report. That's right. Now he wants to tell us that it was not a chokehold. How would you know and you never looked mm -hmm. to see what the evidence was or was not? But you know what? Pantaleo, you, your, your regime, London, y'all can appeal all you want, That's right. but I'm still out here. I'm out here for the long run. You come out here against me, I'm out here. And you cannot scare me away. Yeah, Pantaleo, you may have lost your job, but I lost a son. That's right. That's right. January. I'm sorry, July 17, 2014. I lost my son. Yeah. You cannot replace that. You can get another job, maybe at Burger King, okay? So, but my <laughs> But you know, it's just it's just disheartening to go through this. And like we said, we're not finished. We have other officers that we have to go after. You have heard the names. We know the wrongdoing that they have done. So I would like the press to put it out there. Show the pictures, say the names, yes. mm -hmm. do the roll call, right. because they all need to lose their job. Yeah. Right. New York is not safe with officers out here like that. That's right. All right. These officers are still on the payroll. Pantaleo was supposed to be on desk duty, making six-figure salaries. Put me on desk duty, give me a six-figure salary. There you, go. you know, mm. but no, other New Yorkers can't get that. That's right. If the shoe would have been on the other foot, my son or myself, we would have long been sentenced That's right. probably yeah. to life, yeah. to life yeah. or probably they'd have brought the death sentence That's back. Right. Who knows? But you know what? I don't care what they do, what who they appeal to, even though Commissioner O'Neill said that his decision can't be overturned, but we know that it's going to be a fight out there. That's right. mm -hmm. And I'm out there for the fight. That's I just want y'all to fight with me. And thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is someone who is not unknown to us. 
But before I introduce him, I want to make two quick points. And you were just watching Eric Garner's all, mother, Gwen Carr, and her supporters I reacting to the breaking news that NYPD officer Daniel Pantaleo, implicated in the here. death of her son, has officially been fired. Garner's mother said Officer Pantaleo may have lost his job, but she lost her son. She says five years ago, Mayor de Blasio and Police Commissioner O'Neill failed to terminate Officer Pantaleo, and this decision comes too late.